So I've drilled and capped the five M4 threads into the cast iron pillar here. And I'm going to put this track right on the edge of this of the cast iron pillar here. And it's absolutely aligned parallel. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just using, I'm going to put a plate on here. So we'll do that one there. And I'm just going to clamp that. In place let's just make sure we've got a smooth face yeah so i'm going to put a face on there and i'm going to clamp that with just a, a woodworker's clamp but it's just enough to so that i've got then a hard plate for that and it's worked to and i can push that over into it same one here piece of plate clamp it to the cast iron and then you can see it just it moves over. Let's just start on one end. Oh, that wasn't too clear. That's right on top, so make sure that's flat. Yep. Yeah, that's flat. Pushed over. I'm just going to tighten that one up. Right, and then we'll tighten the one at the bottom up. Actually, I'll tighten that one up because it's closer to that. So that one. Yep, that's tight. That one's tight. That one's tight. So that's the first fitment of that side track. That's me. My Z axis. Piece of plate. Might need that again. Same on that one. So I've got a track on. Now I've got to put the bracket on and Create the clamp for the bracket for the sensor. So that will go somewhere effectively. I'm not enjoying tapping and drilling and drilling and tapping this that much. It's um it's cast iron, which is okay, I'm fine with cast iron, but it's just that it's on a component that I can't replace. <laughs> So, um, being extra careful, so I've just put an M4 tap in here. So, what I'm using is a little metal block, uh, M4 tapping drill. And then four millimeter clear that will put the just in that I've put the tap through. And there's M5 on there as well, three mil in the center. It gives me all the options. Um, hold that block on, I have to put that block, put the tap through, line it up, put the block on and hold it, and then I get a good square start to that tap. That's good. It's going in nice. That's going in really well. I've got the bracket just on loosely. I'm just going to shim it onto here and just just clamp it there, just so that I can then lock it in place whilst I tighten those bolts up. And it'll be a good position. Maybe with one of these, I can just clamp it well enough just to hold it. Yeah, it doesn't need much. Just enough. Yeah, oh, that's good. Now that's holding it. I'm just going to tighten up these. Heads. And then if I remove the shim, I've got a good distance that it's working all the time from the from the actual uh, linear gauge. Now oh, so right. That's good. Right now. So, I've got a bracket with that. I've got a good gap now, which is, uh, I'll just check that gap and tell you what the gap is between the bracket and the gauge. 1.6 millimeters, so 16th of an inch gap down there. That will be parallel, because this is right onto this machined uh, edge of this uh, of the column. Um, I'm going to mount the bracket onto here, which holds the, the sensor. Um, and that then allows me to 
line up this and move this in and out and also I'm going to put my put the magnetic strip in and seal all that off but before I do any of that because this is instrumentation and delicate stuff I'm going to clean my hands um, so I'm now going to fit the magnetic strip one thing I'm going to do first though, is just wipe this strip down with some methylated spirits so it's just an alcohol um, just to make sure that it's clean and free from grease I don't want this coming unstuck um, I wash my hands and clean my hands to make sure they're not greasy anymore after doing the tapping just going to wipe these out carefully, make sure there's no residue of anything on here. Um, they are really in place now as well. So then what I'm going to do is then put a magnetic strip down the middle. Now this, this is the magnetic strip. I'm going to check it again, just make sure the length's exactly right. Yep, that's exactly perfect. And then I'm going to Take this off, take the backing strip off, looks like it's 3M on there, that's what it says. I assume it's, you've either supplied the, the whole thing or the double sided tape. Line that in the groove, in the centre of that groove, and in the centre of that groove there, make sure it all lines up perfectly. Now I'm just going to push that home. That's home. Now on top of that, then, goes a thin stainless steel cover. That sits in there. Now that's going to fall through if I'm not careful. So what goes in each side is a thin piece of what to me looks like neoprene. Um, I'm just going to start to push it in and then I'm going to push it in with a Oh, this this neoprene is not long enough what they supplied but there i'm going to push it in with a piece of a thin piece of mdf just as a piece of wood because i don't really want to damage it so i'm just going to push it in like that that's good so we'll just work along to pushing that home that's good so i've now got a sensor this is um so it's the machine dro it's magnetic magnetic encoder uh, 0.005 millimeters. Um, it's got an arrow on which is the, the reference for it so it goes on like that it's got to be between 0.1 and 1 millimeter off that surface so I'm going to I'm going to shim that to just get that right I'm going to bolt it onto this backing plate first and then I'm going to bolt it onto there and then I'm going to shim it up um, that's that's rather lovely look with the armor plated cable what I've done is I've Ah, so we're watching one of the videos this morning. I've bagged up this connector just to make sure no dirt gets in while I'm uh, while I'm installing it. So I've just used a feeler gauge to set the distance of the sensor off the magnetic strip. Um, the, 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 the definition in the manual says uh, that that distance should be between 0.1 and 1 millimeter. I set it here at 0.63 millimeters. So with that feeler gauge. Um, I'm going to check it top and bottom of the travel just to see whether it's consistent. For that, I'm just going to turn the mill back round again, and then we'll start just to we'll run that one as a check before we then move on to the other axes. Move this cable out of the way again. Up on here, round there. That's good. Keeps it safe for a minute. So I've got the display on now, and I've cut a, a notch out of the power electronics of the mill for the case that goes on the back here. This, is, this case holds all the power electronics, well, a lot of the power electronics for the milling machine. So I've cut a notch out the side here. I've moved the whole case back, as I stated earlier, just a little bit, just about, actually I just moved it to the back. Um, effectively the width of one of these, yes, of the, of the actual encoder, but housing. So it's 22 millimetres back, I've moved it. Um, as I said, I'm going to put a plate on the back there actually later to stiffen up the actual housing. I've moved the display as well, and I've moved it in board. Let me just show, measure that. 
that's 125 millimeters moved it in um, it, it might be a bit close to that hand wheel which is as I said earlier that's why I've left the hole there but that hole out there is a bit too far the other way out so it still might need something in the middle but I've got the z-axis now is all set up which is uh, fantastic so let's just quickly so hopefully if I turn this on now it beeps nicely I've still got the covers on the screen but you can see just remember that the position is 61.9 millimeters down if I just turn the handle oh I can move it five thousandths of a millimeter at a time just about it's quite tough <laughs> you have to think you're moving it really hardly to move it with literally a tiny movement of that 